Uh, welcome to Christ Fellowship Chapel. We are having our program, the Christ Fellowship Program, brought to you from uh, Nisi TV. We are welcoming you to follow and be blessed. And before we uh, have the man of God coming to minister to us this evening, I want us to share the word of God from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, whereby the Bible uh, encourages us or uh, tells us that uh, the word of God is a double-edged sword. It is active and living. This word is really encouraging. As we are preparing our hearts to listen from the Lord, I want us to have our hearts ready, prepare ourselves understanding that the word of God is living and active, and the word of God is sharper than any uh, double-edged sword. Let it uh, minister to our hearts, let, uh, let it uh, mold us and build us, and let us move from one level to another in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching. Follow us every Sunday from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m., and I know you'll be blessed. And welcome to Christ Fellowship Chapel, where Christ takes the preeminence of our worship. And before we welcome the man of God, I want us to believe together and pray. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for such a moment as this that you've blessed us, O oh God. Even as we are preparing to listen from thee, how we welcome you, Holy Spirit of God, that you may mold us, that you may build us, Jehovah Father, that we may be able to be hear us, O oh Lord, and also the doers of your word. Minister to us, Jehovah Lord, minister to the children, minister to the old, minister to the young, Jehovah Father, in a way they will be able to understand your word, Jehovah God. For your word says that your word is active, my Father, and you also your word is living. And my Father, your word is able to penetrate through marrows and bones, Jehovah Father. Minister to us this evening. In, in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Welcome, man of God, as we uh, get blessed together. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Uh, welcome uh, to this program. It is a pleasure to have you uh, at the comfort of your homes or wherever you're watching from. Um, you're welcome. Uh, this is Christ Fellowship Chapel. Uh, this assembly of believers is located a few meters um, uh, in a town called Nakuru Town, a few meters from uh, uh, Kabarak University as you're heading towards Cambia Moto from Nakuru Town. You're welcome anytime you're within the environ uh, environments. You can come and fellowship with us. We'll be glad to have you fellowship with us. I'm your pastor, Pastor David Kitui, and uh, bringing up, um, uh, 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 by the grace of God, bringing the word of God to you. And uh, before we, uh, we bring the word of God to you, I would like us to have some time to worship together with the Christ Amplified Ministers um, to usher in us into the presence of God. Amen.
Thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to study from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 16 to 17. And we are also going to connect it uh, to the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verses 6. Uh, 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 once again, I will not get tired to welcome you to this program, which is coming to you every Sunday from 8.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Every Sunday. This is Nisi TV, your house of rest. Uh, I'm glad that you have chosen Nisi TV. Uh, don't switch that dial, stick with us to the end, and I promise you that you will be blessed. Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 to 17, and Hosea chapter 4, verses 6. The Bible says that, And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, verses 17, but of the tree of the knowledge, and I would like you to underline that word, knowledge, which has been translated to the word dahath, D-A-H-A-T-H, dahath. I would like you to underline that word knowledge because today we are going to study about knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die the book of hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge underline that word knowledge which has also been translated to mean the hearth from hebrew from the hebrew term the hearth because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Praise the name of the living God. We are seeing two paradoxes here, a paradox of two scriptures, that one time God prevents man, humankind, to eat from the tree of knowledge, the hearth. And later on through the prophet Hosea, he is angry because the children of Israel have rejected the heart, knowledge. To me, that seems like a paradox. Seems like a paradox. Let us continue. There are a few points that I would like to put forward and suggest to you uh, so that we can build up from this topic. We are going to study from the subject, dimensions of knowledge. The dimensions of of knowledge, dimensions of knowledge. There are a few points that I would like to suggest, and the first one is that there are different kinds of knowledge which includes but not limited to, number one, secular knowledge. Secular knowledge, that is the worldly knowledge. The second kind of knowledge that I would like to bring our attention to is the satanic knowledge, the satanic kind of of knowledge and lastly the third kind of knowledge that i would like to bring your attention to is the divine knowledge we are actually as children of god concerned about divine knowledge we are concerned about divine knowledge the second point that i would like to suggest is that these are categorized by the process by processes they are categorized by processes and the first kind of process is the accumulation of this knowledge how do you accumulate this knowledge? The second kind of the process is how you store the accumulated knowledge. Storage of this accumulated knowledge. And the third kind of process is how you share the stored knowledge. How this knowledge is, is, is shared. Praise the name of the living God. So the kind or category of knowledge is determined by the process, by a process. Number one, the process of accumulation. Number two, the process of storage. And lastly, how you share that knowledge. I would like us to look at a, a different stages of knowledge, how we acquire knowledge as children of God. How we acquire knowledge as children of God, even as we build up to the two scriptures that are our anchor verses. The first stage of knowledge is what I would like to call factual scientific knowledge. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 19, says that, verses 19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, which surpasses knowledge the apostle paul is trying to show that we have different kinds of knowledge the first one is the first knowledge that he is mentioning to show to know to know 
something that surpasses knowledge. To know something that surpasses knowledge. He's using the same term to mean two different things. And we are going to see about that. The second knowledge is what I would like us to know what it means. This knowledge has been translated from the Greek word gnosis. G-N-O-S-I-S. -S, gnosis. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What is gnosis? Gnosis is what, is what I would like to call factual scientific knowledge. Factual scientific knowledge. These are facts that have been proven through experiments. They have been tested and they have been established that these are facts and they stand. And they have a special place in knowledge as a child of God. The knowledge that, that solid things cannot float on water helps us to understand who Christ is when he walks on water. The fact that two fish and five pieces of loaves can only feed a child helps us to understand what God can do by feeding over 5,000 with a lunchbox of a child. The fact that a man was born blind, it is a fact that for 38 years he has never seen. No doctor can treat him. But Christ comes and tells him, stand up and walk. You have been made whole. It is a fact that the woman with the issue of blood had gone to many doctors and they were all defeated. That fact is very key in building our faith. As a believer, as a child of God, we need to understand facts. The fact that gravity pulls... Uh, pulls things down, objects down, helps us appreciate the divinity of Christ when he ascends to heaven. Praise the name of the living God. A fact is something that is indisputable based on empirical research and quantifiable measures. Facts go beyond theories. Facts are an important part in developing faith. Facts are malleable by context. That is, Facts taken out of context bring different results. Amen? Number two, accurate knowledge. Accurate knowledge. Accurate knowledge. From the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verses 32, the Bible says that those who do wickedly against, against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the one who know, underline that word, know, which has been translated from the, from the Hebrew word epignosis, E-P-I-G-N-O-S-I-S. -S. The one who knows their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. This is a scripture that we like reciting, but do we really know what this no means? Praise the name of the living God. Epignosis is knowledge gained by first-hand relationship and brings about accuracy when it comes to our personal relationships you may hear about people outside there through rumors rumor has it that so and so the child of so and so did this and this and this but not until you develop a close relationship with this person you will be able to eliminate fallacies and base your facts on truths praise the name of the living god your facts will be accuracy because of the relationship that you have developed with this guy. Epignosis requires an intentional cultivation of a healthy relationship. You have to be very intentional to cultivate a relationship. Praise the name of the living God. It is activated by faith and total reliance to the object of our faith. It is activated by faith. Many a times when we want to get married, I remember when, when, when I wanted to get married, I was just coming out of a very bad relationship from, uh, um, from a certain tribe that I don't want to, <laughs> to mention on TV. <laughs> but I came out from a very long relationship from a certain tribe. And I saw, when I broke up that relationship, I saw that I will never marry from that, from that tribe again. I will never have a girlfriend from that tribe again. 
So when I met my wife, I thought that she came from my, from my, from my tribe because she looks like me and, and, uh, and she looks like my relatives. So I, I, I went ahead. By the time I was falling in love, I realized that I have just gone back to the same tribe that I was running from. <laughs> so it takes faith to develop a relationship. It takes faith to the object of your faith. You must trust that this person will not go, is not going to disappoint you. Is not going to, 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 to have the negative qualities that you are running away from. Praise the name of the living God. So it takes faith to develop an intentional relationship so that you can be accurate with facts. You can gain accurate knowledge. Praise the name of the living God. Epignosis works by elimination of fallacies and assumptions. It works by elimination of fallacies and assumptions. The third kind of knowledge is what I would like to call the revealed knowledge. Revealed knowledge. This is the third dimension of knowledge. The revealed knowledge. Revelation is very key in our growth in faith, in our walk in faith. It is through revelation that Christ defeated the enemy in the wilderness. It is through revelation that we get direction of our purpose in life. It is through revelation that we get direction of our destiny, of the visions that God has given us. I cannot start relying on someone else's revelation because each and every one of us has a unique encounter with God, has a unique revelation with God. Praise the name of the living God. Amen? Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 says that then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that has been translated into the term Yada, Y-A-W dash D-A-H Yada that they were naked. They knew they were naked. From the moment that they became naked, they did not know that they are naked. But this time, they knew that they were naked. And they sealed fig trees together and made themselves coverings. Matthew chapter 1 verses 25. And did not know, did not know, that term has been translated into the Greek term ginosko, G-I-N-O-S-K-O, ginosko. And did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. It is very interesting how God has used this Yada and Ginosko to bring about the relationship between a married couple to bring forth offsprings, to bring forth fruits of their wombs. Praise the, uh, praise the name of the living God. Ginosko is revelation knowledge, revel revealed knowledge that leads to wisdom. This is the kind of knowledge that bears fruits. It is the kind of knowledge that takes time, that builds on time. When you get married, those who are married, you do not take a month to start bringing up fruits of your wombs or fruits of your growing. It took time. Amen? So this is the kind of knowledge that you gain after a period of time. After a period of intimacy with a subject. Amen? That is when you start getting your own revelations. And these revelations must help you to bear fruit. Praise the name of the living God. Amen? Yada is also a term that has been used to mean praise and worship. Specifically by lifting your hands up. It is the term Judah. Yada is actually Judah. Praising by lifting your hands up. Praise and worship has a special place in the body of Christ. Actually, if you check carefully, those who are married, the act of sexual intercourse within the confines of a covenant 
within the confines of marriage is an act of praise and worship. It has been, it has been, it has been, God, God has, has, has made it in such a way that it replicates worship that permeates the veil that separates man and God. That separates man and the tabernacle. The veil. And that's why the priest used to go with blood. The covenant of a virgin. Amen? That's why virginity was very important during the first, the first church. Because of that analogy. So this is, this is the kind of knowledge that you get after a period of time. After a healthy relationship. And it must bear fruits. Amen? It must be intentional and purposeful. It must be very intentional and purposeful. And that's why sex outside marriage is a demonic covenant. It is a covenant that the devil can use to bring you down, to fight you. Because any kind of covenant that is not godly cannot be manly. It is only devilish. There is no gray area in this issue. There is no middle ground. It is either godly or satanic. So any covenant that is not godly is satanic. There is no better way to say that. John chapter 8 verses 5. Yet you have known. You have known him. But I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. The word know in this scripture has been translated into the Greek word eido. Eido. E-I-D-O. Eido. And this is what I would like to call the cognitive knowledge. Cognitive knowledge. Praise the name of the living God. Eido is cognitive knowledge. Cognitive is a psychological term that is used to signify awareness. Self-awareness. It is used to signify self-awareness. For example, by the time you get, you attain a, a, a certain age, you, you are aware that you are a boy. You start walking with boys. You start playing boy games. My friends used to say that if you're not watching football, or if you're not a fan of Ferrari, then you're not a boy, you're not a man. <laughs> but that is a lie from the devil. It is God who qualifies who a man is. Amen? And that's why when you see a man taking up girlish behavior, bringing about homosexuality, then that must be demonic. And some deliverance has to be done. I'm not ashamed to say this. Some deliverance has to be done. God is not an author of confusion. Amen? Cognitive knowledge. The Apostle John is saying that I know him. This is the kind of knowledge that the knowledge and the knower is one. Me and the boy of the man. Right now, I'm a man. I'm not a boy. <laughs> but there is always a boy in every man. And there is always a man in every, every boy. Isn't it? Yeah. You can ask my wife at Akwambia that sometimes kuna ukijana inatokanga. <laughs> there is always a boy in every man. There are times that you feel like putting on shorts and go to play football. You feel like going to swim with no apparent reason. But this was first son. This is the knowledge that the knowledge and the knower is one. That is when Paul comes to conclusion in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, that for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is a state of affairs that you and Christ is one. The knower and the knowledge 
becomes one. Cognitive knowledge. Amen? We now go back to our scripture. The heart. We will continue this series next week, same time, same place. Be sure to tune in and let us learn together what the heart is. Praise the name of the living God. I would like to make a short prayer for you who is watching and you have not given your life to Christ. That is the first step of knowing who Christ is. If you haven't given your life to Christ, if right now Christ comes back for the church and you don't know where you're heading to, you can't tell whether you're going to heaven or hell, I would like you to close your eyes. Let us make this prayer together. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I pray that you come into my heart, that through your blood you wash me clean. Forgive me my trespasses and my unrighteousness. I have heard your word and I have believed in my heart and I'm making a confession with my mouth that you are Lord and Savior over my life and that you died for my sake and you resurrected and you are seated at the right hand side of our Father in heaven. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that he may guide me to walk in ways that will please you. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. If you have made that prayer, look for a Bible-believing church. If you are around Kabarak area, you're welcome to come. We will walk together in this walk of faith. If you have any questions, any, 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 any contribution, any comments, um, there is a number below your screen. That is an SMS number. You can send your SMS there. You can also contribute anything to the body of Christ through that number. May God bless you. May God be with you. And I love you with the love of Christ. Amen.